Hey guys, Brian here. Today is going to be a, a big video. We finally have the machine up and running and it is uh, functional, moving. I have Linux CNC mostly set up. I'm sure I'll have a couple more tweaks before I get cutting, but I have all of my steps per millimeter figured out and all my axes figured out. So we are getting real close to, uh, to cutting here. Today's video, I wanna just kinda go over the machine, some of the changes I've made in the last week or two. Um, you'll notice that I have the shop set up a little bit differently now, and I've got the machine in the corner instead of on the left side here. And I think this is just gonna be a little better layout for the enclosure. So uh, we're gonna kinda talk about the changes I've made and kinda go over some of my thoughts on uh, building the Print NC thus far. So right off the bat, we'll talk about the dimensions here. So uh, for anyone wondering, this is the stock size Print NC, and this has a cutting area of 36 on the X, 24 on the Y, and then I have four inches of Z height right now with this bit in here. So you can obviously adjust that a little bit depending on where the spindle sits in the mount and then what, how, what kind of bit you're using. So this is gonna be more than enough uh, room for me. When I had my MPCNC, that was more than enough machine. So I'm gonna be spoiled with this much uh, build area here. So just kind of the, the things that I wanna be cutting are gonna be uh, this is gonna be perfect for me. So so we'll get to some of the changes. Uh, I forget where I left off with my, my build series here, but I have made a couple changes. Uh, one of the biggest ones here, we'll get into the, uh, the Y roller blocks. I went ahead and made these a lot thicker than the uh, original ones that I printed. Uh, the, the ones that I printed might have been from an old revision, but uh, you can see I made these a lot thicker and then I also printed them solid. So I do plan on replacing these with aluminum once uh, I get the machine up and running. So, uh, but I didn't want to have any issues getting to that point. So this is one of the changes I've made here. And then uh, while we're on the left side here, I went ahead and made my inductive limit switch mount. Um, I will throw this on my Thingiverse page, but we also have a lot of files on the wiki for the machine. So I'm pretty sure this is on the wiki, but there's also a handful of other mounts that you can uh, take a look at if you are building this machine. So while we're on the left side here, uh, no changes to the motor mount here. The, uh, the motors so far in my testing have not gotten warm. I do have the drivers set to a half current on idle. I think that's switch four. Uh, still learning a lot on the drivers, <laughs> but the, uh, the motors are not warm from my, at least my testing. So I'm not having any issues with, these, with this PLA mount. However, I am getting some wobble as you might have seen in uh, one of my other clips. So I have some steel mounts that I'm gonna replace here, but uh, it's not a big deal. I think there's just a tiny bit of misalignment here that is causing a little bit of movement. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, but that is something that I'm gonna keep an eye on. And then I had to get a little fancy with the uh, end caps here, as you guys might have been able to notice, so. I'm gonna start with the uh, T-Tracks the and the spoil board here, and I'm not sure exactly what this is gonna look like, but I'll probably just have some sheets or some pieces of three quarter inch MDF in between, and then that is going to kind of elevate the work piece off of the T-Tracks uh, the here. So one thing I do wanna have is uh, some locating pins that I can make with the machine, and that'll let me have uh, multi-operation cuts. Uh, pretty easily, you know, kind of like uh, locating pins, I guess. So that is something that I want to do in the future, but for now, these T-Tracks will get me up and running uh, until I get the machine dialed in. So moving on to the Z-axis, I have done a couple things different here. The uh, inductive mount here, I had to make uh, the inductive switches I got didn't quite reach the Z-plate, so I had to kind of extend that there. You can kind of see that. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be the way to go, you might need to get creative if you do something like this. I know Logan's working on a, a, a solution for this here. He might already have one actually, so by the time this video goes up. All right, so getting onto the spindle here. So I went ahead and bought this connector here. This is like kind of a, a big aviator connector. And what I had to do was I had to drill out this, um, this plate here, the, the, the black plate on the VFD. That way this would fit through. So it is, I don't want to say sketchy, but you do have to, to drill into the, the black plate here. However, this big aviator connector handles this VFD okay. You can kind of see the, the, the crimp part there. So, um, and I'll probably get these hoses, you know, secure a little bit better once I get going. So, 
So other than, other than the connector, um, you know, there is uh, a lot of information about this on the wiki. You got to make sure your spindle is grounded. And, you know, it is a good idea to test to make sure that, you know, your machine's grounded, the spindle's grounded, your clamp, all that stuff. So uh, there is a little bit of soldering involved here. Uh, I've got plenty of uh, <laughs> practice from that with the uh, drone building days, but just kind of a heads up here. And it wasn't anything too uh, complicated, but you know, you are gonna have to do, bust out the soldering iron to get the uh, the wires on this connector here. And then over on the left side, I got the uh, the water connectors here. I did order some hosing, uh, some hoses on uh, Amazon here, and the stock hoses I got from uh, the kit just weren't quite long enough. I wanted a little more flexibility. Uh, speaking of the water, I'm actually gonna have the uh, the water tank or reservoir down here, so. Uh, just kind of up out of the way. The uh, the z-axis screw is different than the uh, x and y so when you go into your uh, Linux CNC configuration it is a different pitch so not a big deal but something to, to keep in mind so moves uh, pretty fast. It's a lot of uh, a lot of metal moving. Not, not used to that you know we're still we're still getting our feet wet here guys and I'm kind of you know, still in awe by this machine. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> and then over on the right hand side, you can see my, my plates again, my the thicker um, uh, roller plates. So um, the the new revision might have a fix for this. So that might not even be an issue if, if you guys are looking at building this, but uh, that is something that I, I did have to have to change. So all right, guys, I know I'm talking a lot, but uh, bear with me here, I guess. Uh, we're kind of just going through this one step at a time. On the right-hand side here, uh, I haven't done anything different. I did add this cable chain mount here, which uh, was very slick, I thought. We'll kind of just do a, a quick tour here. But I I did have to take, uh, what, three or four links out of the Y cable chain. I took three or four links out and then put them in the X cable chain uh, just so I could get it a little bit longer and kind of extend it all the way back here. So uh, a huge shout out to the Discord community for helping me out with, you know, uh, the inductive mount and the cable chain mount. So um, it, it's been a huge help to get the Discord community involved. You know, the the willingness to share and teach is is pretty uh, pretty awesome. So we'll just kind of come around back here and. Uh, bring bring the uh, the gantry over uh, one cool thing here is that you can set your limits in Linux CNC so you really don't need max limit switches at least in my opinion I mean if you want them go ahead and do your thing but you know I, I can no longer if I hit the arrow over here I can't jog this any further because it's at its max limit so it's kinda nice uh, I will probably get these hoses uh, secured a little bit better as they go into the cable chain, but I just want to kind of show you guys the back of the Z-axis here. I did get these terminal strips here, and if you go with these terminal strips, you are going to need uh, ferrules, ferrules, I think I'm saying that right, which are these little posts that go on the end of the uh, wire. Uh, to put the stranded wire in the screw terminals here is not ideal it's it's a pain so uh, I know it's 20 bucks for the tool and the ferrules but it is well worth your time you'll probably use them again on another project so um, I left these long for now I could probably end up shortening these up but I just wanted to kind of give myself plenty of uh, plenty of room same for the uh, limit switch here but um, I'm sure once I get going I'll I'll clean up the wires a little bit more so so the cable chain is gonna come out and around I uh, I might secure this a little bit better too, uh, just so that when it gets to the, the back part of the, uh, the lead screw here, I'm not worrying about you know wires down on the on the lead screw. So still got a little bit of cleaning up to do there, but and then I haven't mounted my Y cable chain yet. That's just kind of hanging out for now. So, uh, but but we'll get there. So and then the wires just come out and around, and then they magically disappear into the case that are all nice and neat. Just trust me, they're all nice and neat. I promise. And then speaking of wires, I have the uh, control box uh, down below here now. So I I wanted to keep this up top, up high, but I once I build the enclosure for this guy, and I haven't figured this out 100% yet, 
but the enclosure is probably gonna go around the entire thing and then I'll have the monitor mounted probably on the front side but I I'm not entirely sure what I want to do yet that'll be kind of next week's uh, project so uh, we're gonna kind of figure that out <laughs> when we figure it out so but I got the uh, control panel mounted down below here and you guys kind of already saw the uh, how that works so I got the PC mounted there uh, off to the right you can kind of see and then that runs up to the monitor so um, when I build the enclosure I'll probably have just a little tray out the front here that holds the keyboard and the mouse so and then I gotta get my Xbox controller working with Linux CNC yet so so speaking of Linux CNC uh, I, I apologize I don't have a way to record my Linux um, screen yet but maybe someday like I said a month ago so the uh, I did get this spindle uh, graph on the right which is kinda cool so I've got uh, the axes here and I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard that will jog the machine which is pretty cool so this is uh, normal speed and and you can change your uh, your jog speed in Linux CNC I thought this was kind of a uh, you know fast enough for now so uh, Linux CNC it's a little intimidating to get into I'm not gonna lie there is a lot of you know a lot of text files not a, not a lot of text files but a lot of text you gotta look at so um, I know the discord community is trying to streamline this as best we can for this machine so the uh, there's a lot of information out there but we're uh, we're doing our best here so and then I'll, I'll show you the spindle control here so here's our spindle start Very quiet, very, very quiet compared to like a DeWalt router or something. So that's uh, nice to hear. And then I've got uh, speed controls here as well. And then you can see the, uh, the graph as well as I turn it up. So. So you guys get the idea. You know, pretty uh, easy to talk over, but uh, but yeah. All right, guys. I think that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick update and kind of show you guys where I was at with the machine. So, needless to say, I'm pretty uh, excited to get cutting with this guy. So I got to get the enclosure built first, and that's gonna probably be. Uh, uh, next week's project so uh, I got a lot going on in life right now so I'm gonna probably give these videos uh, I don't want to say a break but I, I do want to focus on some uh, some personal things right now so I will update you guys with the enclosure um, whenever that happens maybe in you know two or three weeks and uh, I do appreciate everyone watching I you know seeing the channel grow like this a little bit was uh, was pretty cool so um, you know, if you want to stay tuned for the enclosure, feel free to subscribe and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.